take a, a somewhat longer period of time, and say, for, for example, let's go back about 30 years, um, you have actually seen one of the, one of the greatest investments in, in infrastructure in the, in the history of our country. Um, the New York transit system, uh, which is really, frankly, the lifeblood of, of the city in this, in this region, uh, that transit system had been allowed to decay. I mean, if we were sitting where we're sitting today in, in, in the middle of midtown Manhattan in the early 1980s, we would have, we would have seen a transit system that had, had largely become a, a national symbol of urban decay. But, but at that time, um, a, a program was started, an effort was started to rebuild this great transit system, to invest in the, in the infrastructure, invest in our rolling stock and our tracks, our stations, our power plants, our, our, our uh, communications equipment, et cetera, shops, every aspect of that, of that transit system. And that program ha has really continued for the last 30 years. We've invested over $60 billion right now. And, and I think that the proof of that story shows up in, 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 in so many different ways. It shows up in the, the, the mean distance between breakdowns on our subway fleet, which uh, back 30 years ago was 7,500 miles between failure, and today it's 170,000 miles. Uh, it shows up in a, in a railroad that, that we run, the Metro North Railroad, where we've invested in all the various aspects of that, and people complain now if the on-time performance is less than 98%, because that's what they've come to expect. And it shows up in the utilization of our transit system every way that we, that we go around it. Today, 50% more people are actually riding our transit system every single day than we're using it just 15 years ago. So I, I think what we've seen is, is the, the ability to recognize the issue, to grapple with it, to make the investments, to sustain them over a long period of time, and to rebuild this so that the transit system moves from being the, the symbol of decay, the sense of the, the failure of our city, to actually the fundamental underpinning of our, of our success. We're very much, though, in a period in which we are, um, we have challenges in front of us. Let's not, let's not kid ourselves. Um, New York has, has, has really done something very, very special over the, over the last number of years. It moved beyond just rebuilding its basic infrastructure uh, to actually saying, what do we need to do to continue to be the world-leading 21st century city? And one of the things that we needed to do was, was to be able to, to continue to invest in our transit system to the development of new lines, new connections, more capacity, more ways to be able to do things. Because, in fact, the, uh, you know, the development of our city over the last hundred years, developing our region over the last hundred years doesn't necessarily equal the same thing as it looked in 1904 when the New York City subway system opened uh, in the very first day. So today we have the challenge of, of really being able to do two things. For many years we put off this challenge of new investment, but today we have the challenge of, of this new investment that we're making. Some of the largest transportation projects um, uh, in our country are right here in the middle of New York City, right underneath where we're sitting right now in, in Manhattan, just north of Grand Central Terminal, uh, is the largest transit project in the United States of America. It's 140 feet below the ground, and so you don't know that it's here, but that's what's going on right now. And today we have the challenge of, of, of moving these projects forward and finishing these projects. They're all actively under construction with, with, with billions of dollars of investment. But at the same time, we need to continue to make the investments to, on our core infrastructure, on, our, on, a, on the hundreds and hundreds of miles of track and, and, and equipment equipment and everything that goes into the, the, the eight and a half million people every single day uh, who utilize our, our transit system. And finding the way to be able to do this and finding the, the capacity, the financial capacity to be able to do this, even in these difficult economic times, is our challenge. Um, what we have to find the way to do, what I firmly believe we need to find the way to do, is to invest. This is not a grant. This is not a loan. It's an investment in our future. We're sitting at a time right now where we're in many ways counterintuitive to what we might have expected. The, the importance of cities, not just in America, across the world, is growing. Right? The, 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 we're recognizing that despite the technology, despite the ability to be able to send emails and do other things, we want to be in cities. We like what, what happens in cities. We want to be there. We need to be there is how our economies are continuing to grow. And a larger and larger portion of, of the population around the world is actually in and is projected to continue to be um, in urban areas. Um, 
What makes that possible is infrastructure. Uh, it's not possible without that. You can't imagine the, the, the island of Manhattan, the economic activity that's taking place here without the transportation infrastructure that's allowing us not just to think about this as a city, not just to think about it as a borough, but to think about it as a region because we're able to think about our transportation system knitting together everything that is happening around here and allowing people to be able to move uh, and do that. The, the encouragement, I think, that, that has really come and the reason why I'm so passionate passionate about it is um, we rarely get to see uh, in, in, in some of these things the fruits of our labor as, as clearly as I think we are seeing them in the transit system right now. Um, I started my career in the early 1980s. I began my work um, in my career on the, on the very first capital program for the, for the MTA. And I think that the, the reason that, that I think you see it is that, that New Yorkers um, have turned around and said, I want this system and I depend on this system again and I'm using this system again. Whether you get on the train at 7 o'clock in the morning or 7 o'clock at night or midnight or 1 o'clock in the morning, New Yorkers are using it. It is their lifeblood. And, and, and it's happened because of the investments we've made in infrastructure. That's what's made that possible because people now believe that it's safe and it's reliable and it's quick and it's clean and it's going to get them where they want to go. And, and watching people and watching the change that that has had uh, in our city, in our region, watching its success is incredibly encouraging. It is an, a monumental success story.